It was pretty much inevitable that this was going to happen. As soon as the Rise announcement came out, and the fact that it was going to be a Switch exclusive, there was bound to be immediate comparisons and plenty of bias in people to come out, whether it was for Rise or for Worldborn. In this video, I'm going to explain why it really is pointless to be comparing Rise and Worldborn right now. Let's get into it. Now, this one right off the bat has different levels of severity. I absolutely love the Nintendo Switch as a console, but I would definitely be lying if I said that it didn't have some limitations. It being a portable console has its pros and its cons. You're going to take hits with things like graphics, and frame rate definitely isn't going to blow you away by any means. Trying to put the Switch's hardware against an Xbox One X or PS4 Pro would be redundant. The latter two consoles are packing serious hardware in comparison. Now, to be fair, even on these more powerful consoles, getting a steady 60 frames was a pretty hard ask. But when we move things up another level, we come to the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. It's clear that these consoles are in another stratosphere, but hopefully we'll see the release of something like a Switch Pro so it can try to catch up a bit. With these next-gen consoles, you're getting stark 4K 60fps gaming. With just about any game, that's already going to look gorgeous, and we all know Worldborn is a different breed, so it looks beyond stunning. But we're not done yet. If we take it to the final level, PC users are also able to play Worldborn and I don't need to go into detail of how ridiculous your frame rate and resolution can be when you're playing on a PC. But all of that is to say that we have to judge the game by seeing how it performs with what's available to it. Don't get me wrong, Worldborn in 4K is absolutely stunning and very hard to beat, but have you played the Rise demo? The RE engine absolutely blew my mind when I first loaded up the demo and went off to take on a great Izuchi. And that's what we need to be doing. We need to be appreciating the astronomical leap that Capcom has taken from Gen U to Rise. If you put these two games side by side, it's immediately clear just how impressive Rise is visually. But that's the thing, no matter how impressive the RE engine is, there's always going to be a cap or a limit when we talk about the Switch's capabilities. It's redundant to compare a game on hardware that can run over 100 FPS in 4K to one that is pushing hard for 30 FPS in much lower resolution. I still have to end this section of the video by saying bravo to Capcom because Rise still looks and plays very well. Think about how many new things they've introduced to us with the Rise demo already. We have absolute game-changing things like wyvern writing that will shape how we mount monsters, how we handle other monsters intruding on our hunt, and more. The fact that we literally get to control a monster is a concept that hasn't even been a glimmer of a possibility in any entry. Outside of Monster Hunter stories, but it seems with the radio silence that they're not really caring too much about that franchise. The closest you could really say is when you clutch onto a monster in Worldborn and give them a smack to change the direction before you launch them. And even then, it's still completely different in how you approach and execute things. Even exploring the maps in each game is quite different. With Rise, we have an introduction of Spirit Birds that are going to have a bit of an impact, it seems, on how we approach things pre-hunt. We've seen the Spirit Birds extend our health and stamina bars the more we collect. There's Endemic Life to improve our defense, decrease stamina depletion, improve our attack, and even affect the monsters and debuff them in ways. This amount of emphasis on Endemic Life is another aspect we haven't really experienced, outside of a small spotlight in Worldborn. Moving on, we get to the Silkbind moves. Now, this is clearly a nod to the hunter arts that we got to enjoy in Gen U, which, by the way, if you haven't watched part one of my Why You Should Play Gen U, you should probably do that after this. The Silkbind moves are straight up expansions of a weapon's moveset. You don't have to fill up gauges, you don't have to meet specific requirements until you use them, of course, then there's a cooldown. When you look at Worldborn, what would you compare the Silkbind moves to? The closest thing that I could really think of would probably have to be the Gunlance's Wyvern Fire. You launch that off and then there's a cooldown before before you can start to use it again. Even the actual move sets themselves have seen some pretty drastic changes coming in, looking at you, Hunting Horn. But other weapons like the Heavy Bowgun having charged shots and counters are pretty sudden turns for the weapon from where it was in Worldborn. This is what is prevalent throughout the process trying to compare Rise and Worldborn. It really is an apples to oranges conversation. If you looked at the Monster Hunter series and picked out what would be considered the Black Sheep, you'd be hard pressed to pick any other entry but Worldborn. And don't take that as me as knocking it in any way whatsoever. I've never put more hours into a game, I've never had more fun, enjoyment, or gratification from a game either. Worldborn is literally at the top of my list. 
but I would be naive to say that it definitely took the biggest risk and made the biggest changes to the core of what Monster Hunter is than in previous titles. Some of these changes were great when it comes to the quality of life things, such as the radio menu, but these changes all really lead to the conclusion that Monster Hunter World was truly the first of its kind. It's really hard and honestly of little value to try and take this entry and put it side to side with the others. When you look back, the biggest shakeup prior to this was probably underwater combat, but even that was short-lived. Scout flies were introduced, clutch claw mechanics, brand new armor systems, layered weapons, open maps, and so much more. When we have a sequel to Worldborn, the comparisons will be much more garnered and actually worthwhile. Till then, it's a waste of time and breath at this point. Speaking of sequels, if you want to eventually compare two titles, go for the direct iteration that it's actually the sequel of. The team behind the absolute solid port, Generations Ultimate, are the same team that have been working on and will be releasing Rise. What we've seen in just the demo alone has shown us the massive improvements they've made, and not just in the form of graphics, even though Rise does look fantastic, but even from the combat, quality of life, and flow of the hunt. It's a lot easier to make a comparison and come to a conclusion when the game was literally meant to be an improvement from it. There's obvious correlations between Rise and Gen U. For example, look at the Hunter arts in Gen you and tell me that doesn't directly lead to the implementation of the silkbind moves. See, now there's a slight change up since you don't have to fill a bar to use the silkbind moves, but we know where they came from. Hell, some of the silkbind moves are nods or direct ports from some of the different style mechanics as well. The dual blade silkbind move is literally the adept dodge from Generations Ultimate. The sword and shield silkbind move is round slash with a fresh coat of rise paint and flare added to it. We should be talking about the astronomical improvements they've made from Gen U to rise. Loaded zones to full open maps, absolutely hating your life while you're climbing up zone 6 in the Vernon Hills to literally being able to pull out a giant bug and being able to cover ridiculous amounts of ground. The introduction of this massive amount of vertical movement itself is mind-blowing, and for them to do it so effortlessly and in such a polished state is something that gets overlooked, mainly because people are still mad over it being a Switch exclusive. These are the comparisons that should be being made, the two games that are actually directly connected. Honestly, I probably could have just started here and been done with the discussion altogether, but chances are if you're watching this video you've already seen my video on the absolute shit article that was made about the Rise demo like it was a full-blown version of the game. This is what it looks like to me anytime someone is trying to legitimately argue that Rise is better than Worldborn, or that Worldborn is better than Rise. It's a bit worrisome seeing some of the clearly trash takes that I've seen coming from the inside of the community, a community that I absolutely love and have had nothing but positive experiences with. I mean, we all see what's going on in the world today. It's your team against mine, and I don't care what the take is, if it's coming from the side that isn't mine, it's automatically bad. And that's the most political I'll ever get, so I do hope you enjoyed that. But I'm seeing the cracks in the foundation where teams are starting to form between Worldborn Hunters and Hunters from the 4U, Gen U games, and of course eventually Rise. It's really not that hard to enjoy both of the games and the different branches of the Monster Hunter tree they may fall in. Want to see that in real life? This comment from Shady Fungus is a fantastic mindset. I promise it's not hard to have that mindset either. If you think Rise is already better than Worldborn, that's baseless. If you think there's no chance that Rise will be able to meet or surpass Worldborn in quality, that's also baseless. We have an extremely small sliver of Rise, so making any kind of broad statements just doesn't make any sense. We have four monsters in a roster that's easily going to be over 10 times that. We have weapons that we have very little data on, armor without actual skills, bow guns that don't have access to all the ammo they can use, and the list could go on and on and on. Being an elitist on either end of the spectrum just isn't the move. I haven't played all of the Monster Hunter titles, so I can't say which is the best. I can say though that Worldborn is literally my favorite game I've ever played, and I hope Rise is even better than that. When these games succeed, the entire franchise succeeds, and that success breeds even better games in the future. But that's going to be it for this one. After seeing all the Monster Hunter Bad Takes videos popping up, I felt like this video needed to be made. Part 2 of why you should play Gen U is coming soon, so keep your eyes peeled for that one. If you like the video, please do feel free to let me know with that thumbs up. Comment down below what your take is on all of the Team Worldborn versus Team Rise stuff. And keep it civil or I swear to you, Mir, I'll go full time and raise hell. Subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't already for more Monster Hunter, Rise, and other gaming content. Streams, reviews, guides, and more. Have a good night, happy hunting, and I'll see you guys in the next video.